looking for you. Trick or treat, my fine pretty. We are in the month of Halloween. A time for all us goodies to get out and get some treaty. Well, I may look a little pale, but I think I look pretty delicious. Get it? <laughs> I am coming for you, for each and every one of you. I may look but I am fountain pen delicious. I'm what they call in the fountain pen world. I'm inkified. I am coming for you and you may end up to be one of my friends. Just hanging around. And look at my bone bird. Yes, what's such a delight. So, welcome to my world of zombie land. You like to be a zombie? <laughs> Can you cut the mustard? Or are you frightfully, deliciously scared? I am coming for you! <laughs> I am coming closer and closer and closer. So good. Oh, uh, I beg your pardon. I'm gonna put that up. Yep. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Today, I'm gonna do the reverse of the pin carry. So, what do you think is the reverse in pin carry? Well, it's pins that I've already used and I have washed out and cleaned for them to go night night. So let me show you the pins that I've just cleaned out out of my pin rotation. And we're going to start with the Himalaya. FPR, then the Schaefer Triumph Chrome GT, really cool pin. I like the weight. Uh, I like that inlaid nib. It really is a really nice pin. And this was new old stock. And then we have the Lamy Safari, another of my favorites. I love the grip. Triangular grip, for me, that really works very well. For some, not so well. And one of my really favorites, really, really, really favorites, nothing fancy, no bells and whistles, it's the Schaefer Vintage Student Fountain Pen. This was made around the 60s. Uh, very simple. And it uses a cartridge. So, I really do enjoy these pens. You know, when you say vintage, one would think they would be worth a lot of money. Yeah, so did I at one time. But it just depends on the pen, uh, the style, the material they used in it, the type of nib. This was, just, like I said, a student pen, just a, a plastic barrel and a uh, chrome cap just really nice still nib but I love it it just brings back great wonderful memories you know when you buy pens it's not always about bells and whistles about name brands it's about pens that you can identify with that you can relate to that's really important at least to me it is and here is a pretty cool one the Nimison Nickel 
Fusion. Really a sweet pen. I love the weight to it. Really nice. And then let's go with the Lamy Lux. Look at that beautiful new tradition of the Lamy Lux. Very beautiful. And I love that black nib. Really looks nice. And I like the translucent grip. Really looks sweet. Very sweet. Love Lamy. Now, here we go again to the Schaefer Vintage Student Fountain Pen. Again, no bells and whistles, but this is a little different than this one here. Why is that? Because this is not a see-through barrel. This is a solid colored barrel. And again, it brings back those sweet memories from my days in school. Just love the pen. And, and they write nicely. At least I think they do. And the tech tactile turn. Fountain pen. Fountain pen, yes. With a twist off cap with a box fine nib. Sweet. Tactile turn. I believe this is a, is it called a Gus? G U S T? Yes, I believe so. You, you know, I, I got this out of the Dallas Pen Show. And I met Will and his buddy and some uh, other folks there. And uh, we talked a bit. I did a video on it. And December, and you will get dates and information all about what I'm about to tell you, which I'm really excited about, is that Mr. Announcer and I will be going to their facility. I believe it's in Richardson. And we'll be doing a video out there with them. Cool. I'm going to tell you all about these cool pins. And they also have ballpoint murder balls, I believe. So that's going to be really cool. So that's be in January. Now, another cool pin that I, I like, I haven't had any problems, is uh, the Aldo. Yep. Monteverdi. All the domain. Dom uh, yeah. Domani, the, I think. Domani. Yeah, the Monteverdi. Right here. Uh, this was all new stock. Uh, screw on, screw off cap. Uh, I've had some comments left that uh, they've had problems with uh, their pen. I'm sorry to hear that, that it leaked. Uh, but this one, I've inked it up I don't know how many times. And it's been just a really wonderful writer. And here is a really a cool pen. And this is what's cool about it. A little twister on top. That is so good a little catcher. So you know you're sitting there and you're thinking and you're just turning round over and over again, just playing with it. That is really cool. I like that. You know, so and as you notice, it doesn't have a clip. Well, I don't buy pens without clips. But I tell you that I'm a fountain pen reviewer, so sometimes I have to bite the bullet and get a pen without a clip. Uh, so this was one I chose. Uh, not expensive, and really it performed very well. So I'm glad it's in my collection and rotation. And here is a very cool pen. Another Schaefer on deck. This is the Schaefer No Nonsense Vintage 1970 to 1980-ish with a medium nib twist off cap. And for this pen, I did went out and buy a converter for it. Really been a sweet pen. Again, no bells and whistles. It's a I like the design. I love the color. Blue is my favorite color. Uh, nice clip on it. Has a decent nib. Writes well. Wet. So, that's another sweetie. And uh, here was a pin that was given to me. 
uh, by a very good friend. Also, this is a Schaefer Levenger. I think how the story went, Levenger teamed up with Schaefer and they put this pin together and here it is. Schaefer Levenger. And on the nib it does say Schaefer Levenger. Really a sweet pin with a 14K broad nib. And last but not least, Jin Hao 992. So this is my pin clean out from previous use. Now hang with me and I'll tell you what happens with these pins. Well, do you keep up with uh, Brian Feelander from the Pin Think Store? Well, if you haven't, he has moved down the street to uh, a different uh, building. And, uh, but he's the gentleman that put out these uh, plot logs. Ink swatch pot, pot logs. So here's a little log thing for you can write all cool stuff about your pens and your nibs and your ink and the day you inked it up and the date you cleaned it and your remarks about the pens and then you can swatch plot about the saturation one through ten you know how the story is right so uh really nice and then he came out with a bare log and here's the full size log mini log and the full size log so you can see that really nicely so uh, he did a lot of brain thinking to come up with a log for any pen enthusiast, even any beginner, that can keep track of their pens. Uh, there, I know there's been quite a few that have been out, uh, but I, I think this one by far is pretty cool. I think it has more detail, more information. It's, it's a decent. Uh, and here are the notes in the back. You can put notes about whatever's going on with the pins you use. So, you know, I, what I really like about the pen, this also is, you know, you have enough room to write down your inks and your pen and nib. And you do those, uh, your ink swatch right there. Uh, I like the remarks. So it, it is really just a really handy uh, book to log your fountain pens in. So all these either have been logged in here or about to be logged in here. And that way I will save them. I will save these notebooks and I can go back to them. And look them up in these log books to see when I used the pen last. To read the remarks, what I put about the pen and the ink, or either one. And uh, when I last used it, what ink I used, that lets me know that I've used this pen so many times these many months this year. Also it's going to show me what inks I'm using a lot or not a lot but then I like the ink so why haven't I used it more. So this is very helpful to me. Brian Fiendlander, The Pen Thing Star. You can find him. Just trying to answer. ThePenThing.com Just type that in and go to it. Now last but not least now we'll start from the beginning, right here, and the name of this... Girologio. Yeah, Girologio is the name of this pin case. Uh, it's really a nice pin case. I think it's like cowhide, it's not the leather version. But I, I do like it a lot. I like the way it feels. And then, you know, after a while, this uh, pin case will adapt to you. 
you know, with the scratches and marks and and from your hands, you know, when they sweat and it just, it becomes part of you. And here is my pin carry for now. And later I will do a review on these pin cases to tell you about these pin cases. But you can always look these pin cases up. Uh, Goulet pin sells them. Anderson pin sells them. Or you can just uh, type in the name again. Girologio. Yeah, and that is spelled G-I-R-O-L-O-G-I-O. Website and that'll pull him up right there, and you can see all his great, cool, very well made pin cases at a very affordable price. Uh, I bought these, so uh, I'm not the fortunate ones that got it free, but it was worth the money. Back to the pin carry. So let me show you the pin carry. Uh, this is the lovely Mont Blanc Little Prince, the story about the little prince and the fox out in the desert. Very lovely pen, has a fine nib, very smooth nib, nice and wet, just a really joy to write with it. And a special thank you from Doc Joe out there for his generosity for giving me this pen. And Doc, I'm still using it, as you can see. Magnifique. And my next one is going to be the Jinhao 750. You know, I, I like the Jinhao 750s. I like the weight, the color. They feel great, the clip. Most of all, what I like about these pens, they use number six nibs. And what I do, I usually change the nibs out. Right now, I have a Knox nib in it. And that's a lot of fun to put different nibs. So, get that back there. And my little one, it doesn't have a clip on it, so I've got to dig it out. And it is my Cave Caveco. Yes. As you can see, I've been using this little devil, and it's almost out of ink. You know, I haven't used my Cavecos for over two years, and when I inked it up and started writing with them, bam, what a reconnection. It just hit me. These are some dynamite fountain pens. If you have yet to try one, get one. You'll love it. Now, here's a sweet baby. Beautiful, like lime green. The Jinhao 159. This is how I got started in Mont Blanc and got my first 149. Yes, they're expensive, but well worth the money in my opinion. And it takes me some time, as I've said many times before, to save up for a high-end pen. But I'm glad I did. But here are the Jinhao 159, which I use a lot. I love them. Screw off cap, they got some weight, nice heavy lacquer that come with a converter. And again, these pins use a number six nib. And I have a, it's a 1.5 knot nib in it. Alrighty. Jinhao, again. The Swan with a fine nib, and this looks like a number five nib. Really a sweet, fun pen. You know, when you're writing with this pen at the office, people say, Well, oh, that's interesting. First of all, what is it? It's a fountain pen. What's a fountain pen? Then that gives you your chance to explain a little bit about fountain pens. And They'll say, well, what is that on the top of it? Well, that's a swan. And then you can elaborate more about the pen. Really a nice pen. Believe it or not, wet and smooth. And I'm using Mr. Announcer. 
Guller. That's a Chinese ink cartridges. I've done a review on some other ones, and uh, these two will be coming up when I ink up my next pens. So uh, I'm liking the ink. I haven't had any problems with the ink on these pens at all, and I'm glad. I'm truly glad. Now here's one that is on loan that uh, Frank uh, Frank and Kara Overman that Frank Overman uh, loaned me for the review and haven't I done a review on this yet? Which one is that? This is that new one. Uh, I have to get the name for it. Uh, offhand it's just not hitting me. I don't think we've reviewed it yet. Then I'll be reviewing review <laughs> I will be reviewing this uh, pen very, very soon. I can tell you this much. It really is a nice pen. A nice writer. Uh, wood barrel. Uh, it performs well. And I'll tell you all the story about this pen. Interesting. You can find this pen on Facebook. But I just have to remember the name. So, And I'm not going to edit the uh, video because I forgot the name. not going to do that. Straight up with it, buddy. Here is a pen that was given to me by a very generous subscriber that wants to stay anonymous. Jin Hao, this is the shell version. It's really just a be beautiful pen. Uh, and uh, I like the way it writes, like the way it looks, like the way it feels. as we move along. All right. Here's the FPR Himalaya with a 14K gold nib. And this is the Flex, I believe. Yep. But what's cool about these Flex nibs I'm just learning how to flex. No, I'm not big into flexing. No. Will I ever get better than what I am now? Most likely not. But I do have fun with them from time to time. You can write with this nib as you do a regular fountain pen nib. So, uh, And then when you want some flex, you can. And that's what I usually do with it. Uh, a great pen, a great nib. And I believe the nibs are like 129 for the nib itself. And which is a really nice, affordable price for a gold nib. And uh, you just need to check out the Fountain Pen Revolution uh, Fountain Pen site for a pen of your choice. And here is the Trevene. Trevene. <coughs> Trevene. Trevene ends with an E. I. I ends with an I. Really a nice fountain pen as well. And this one, yeah, I've done the review on both of them, uh, has the Ultra Flex Steel Nib, really a sweet pen. Uh, now, what I'll say about this pen, uh, it lays down the ink, a lot of twist on the barrel, yes, I know. Uh, but uh, just make sure that... Uh, You have enough ink in here because this little baby will eat it up. Now you can turn this into an eyedropper for all you eyedropper fans. And I would say, yes, I would use this as an eyedropper because it goes through ink like crazy. And that's a good thing because then you'll be able to go through some of those inks you have. Meaning me for one of them. All right, here is a, another Himalaya FPR, uh, and it has a flex nib in it, small one, and it writes really nice. I believe I have yeah, 12 in this pin case, sure I do. And here is a Nimason. I said that correctly? Nima sign. Nima sign. Uh, plastic barrel. Feels great. Great looking. It's just a singularity, I believe. Really a nice pen. 
picked it up at a great value. So, uh, and this pen has a, what did I say it have? Was it a medium nib <coughs> or a broad nib? Let's just do something right now and find out. This would be a broad nib, I think. But I've done a review on this, so you might want to check it out. Really a nice writer. I enjoy it. And Nimbusai, coming up again. Look at this one. Beautiful. Beautiful, gorgeous. Screw it off. Beautiful cap. And uh, this is a medium. Beautiful pen. I, I really enjoyed the Nimbusai. Nimbusai fountain pens. They, they really are uh, a lot of fun uh, to use. They really have some, some decent nibs. Uh, you know, yeah, they're metal with lacquer, but uh, they have full metal, or you can go with the, the ones that aren't metal, but they're, they're affordable any way you look at it. The nibs are r really great for what you're getting, that's value. And you know, anytime you can pick up a pen with your favorite ink, remember to, if you can, pick up some good paper. It's always important, at least to me, to pick up some quality paper. Why is that? Well. Nib, ink, and paper kind of go together like a glove. The better quality paper you use, the nicer, the richer, that popness of the ink is going to come on that paper. Okay, and, and that's really important to me. Why is it so important? Well, I, I buy ink because I like the way the color looks. I don't like boring inks that are just, that do nothing. I like them to pop. Oh, I do like some subtle inks. And, you know, let me kind of retract what I just said. There are a few boring inks that I really have enjoyed. I don't know, it just kind of overcomes me. And I said, you know what? That's just not that bad. But, uh. I like to put all the gloves together when using them. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. I, you know, was trying to do something different because I've never seen, here's all the pens that I've done used and I'm washed out or about to wash out and, and put to bed and then go with my first The pins that I'm using now in my rotation, but these are about getting low on ink, so I will be doing some other pins very, very soon, but I will be talking more about this baby and its mother. Yes, I have the mother here, and that's the uh, 48. Big Mama. In fact, I'll just give you a little look-see. Same brand. Same gentleman that makes them. Is that gorgeous? Isn't that knockout? I like that. And out. I've got more. Yes. Oh, I've got more and more and all this is full and I'll tell you the story later. I don't want to bore you. I don't want to keep you. But, uh, you know, uh, I may not have all those high-end pens that a lot of folks have and review and I wish them nothing but the best and congratulate the reviewers for having those beautiful pens. Uh, but, I do what I can 
as much as I can. And I want to thank each and every one of you, all you folks that have sent me fountain pens to keep as gifts. I really appreciate that. That helps me more than you know. Also, for people that send me fountain pens so I can review and then I can give away as giveaways. That's another plus. That really helps. It really does. So, see, without you kind of folks, it would be harder for me to get these pins because there's only certain pins that I have to get at one time and I said, okay, I'll get this one and that one. But I have to save for this one. If I'm going to get a high end pin, like I said before, it could take me six months to a year. Once it took me, what, almost two years to get. So, but I get there. Uh, but while we're at it, if you have a pen you'd like me to review, you may send it to me. You can just you can always email me at Mr. Announcer. Larry B0711 at gmail.com. And I will answer you and I will send your pen back when I get through reviewing. Now I just want to let you know that it may take a couple of weeks because once I get the pen, I need to get to know the pen so it may take me three days to a week writing with it seeing how the pen performs and then doing a review on it then you know clean the pen out and get it back to you so uh, that's an option if if you can afford it you can always contribute to my PayPal or what's the other one? Patreon. Yeah, I have both of them. Uh, and that helps me buy what I need to get. Uh, ink or paper or pen. Uh, but uh, I don't really get that much traffic for pay, uh, PayPal or uh, what other one? Patreon. Yeah, I use it. Well, there's not much in there. hadn't been. so. But yeah. I have it. It's there. If you can afford to donate, feel free to do so. That helps out a lot any way you can. Um, I think that's going to wrap it up for now. But until my next video, first of all, Happy Halloween. It's getting there. So let me bring my friends out if you don't mind because they want to talk to you. Now we're going to kill the light. Give me something good to eat. And then. Hello. Hi. Give me something good to eat. And now. Don't go away yet, my friend. Alright, let's do it. Yes. It is. The Eve of Halloween. The Eve of Halloween is upon us. And it is that time of year, my friends, for trick or treat. Trick or treat. It has all turned dark. And now, I say to you, Trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. Trick or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. Goodbye, my friends. Be safe. And remember, don't text and drive. Happy Halloween! <laughs>